E3 just wrapped up its conferences, and as usual, I have emotions. What kind of emotions? Well, let's look at it conference by conference. EA, Madden. What the fuck? I saw this and thought, great, I don't get a bathroom break during their conference this year. For Madden 18, EA took the part of FIFA that I like and gave it a story mode now. I actually heard people saying how innovative EA is for this, but 2K did it like two years ago and no one gave a shit then. But a story mode is honestly something that could get me to play Madden for the first time in like 10 years. You know, when it's like $10 in like five months. DICE keeps mentioning night maps as if it's a major selling point of this DLC, and I really hope that isn't the case. Like Battlefield 1 is fun, but I don't go back to it and not having night maps isn't the reason. Sports games with better graphics. Next! Need for Speed Payback is a game that plays like Fast and Furious movies look, and that's a good thing. But damn those gas prices. A Way Out is a game I am extremely excited for. There's a severe lack of couch co-op focused games. Constant split screen, even for online, is an interesting take, and it makes me want to get this game immediately. And hey, my name's in it. Come on, Leo! Hey Jake, let's do a Let's Play. Aw oh, sweet, a new Bioware game. I can't wait to see it in action. Where was the game? No time to show it. Here's more fucking sports. You know that series we had to cancel for a year because 2K does it better than us? It's an RPG now. We still can't fix the faces. We are proud to announce a sequel to a game so lacking that the current star of the franchise even hated it. It has prequel stuff. It has sequel stuff. It has single player. It has everything the first game should have had. We've got a whole bunch of new features. One of the biggest ones that a lot of fans are excited about is the class system. You mean like the original freaking games? The team at DICE heard our feedback loud and clear on the previous Battlefront and are committed to keeping this community together with themed seasons of content post-launch for all players at no additional charge. The season pass did not work for us in the slightest. So we are out of games, but we rented the stage for way too long, so here's just more Star Wars. You showed us nothing and this conference wasn't necessary. Jesus, end. Time for Xbox. The Xbox One X. As someone who used to work at GameStop, that's gonna get confusing. X sounds way too similar to S and it's gonna be the bane of every retail employee's existence. It's nice because it's almost as powerful as my PC, almost. Since it's this powerful, this probably means that the Xbox One is here to stay for a while so you don't have to get rid of it if you're like me and still have the original brick of a console. But it also means that no game will be able to fully take advantage of the power since it also needs to be playable on this thing. That's why these mint console upgrades are weird to me because it's either you make everyone happy and put it everywhere or make it an exclusive to the new one and piss off half your fans Base. But of course, all of this is a moot point since every fucking game you show says Windows 10, so why should I care? Congratulations. You played yourself. Here is a car none of you can afford. It's weird that Forza is on stage right now, but everything is saying that this is the most important part of the reveal. Like, why should I care so much? Hey, this trailer reminds me I should play the other Metro games. I'm a huge fan of Assassin's Creed, and Origins looks like it's really cool and fun. The gameplay looks so much better than Syndicate did, and Ancient Egypt is such a perfect setting for it. But where are the Ancient Egyptian card games? Deep Rock is just No Man's Sky that has gameplay. State of Decay 2 just looks like a crappy version of Dead Island which was already shit. The Darwin Project looks like a video game version of The Hunger Games, and I'm okay with that. Minecraft in 4K! Okay. But seriously, the idea of being able to play Minecraft with any of your friends regardless of consoles, great. I really do hope it sets a precedent for cross-platform games. Oh god, yes. Oh god, yes. Dragon Ball Fighter Z. oh my god, oh my god, a 2D fighter made by the guys who did Blaze Blue and Guilty Gear? Consider me fucking sold! The Last Night looks like a game that you get excited for when you see it, stop caring, and buy it two years later on Steam during a sale for five bucks and never play it. I was really excited for Sea of Thieves back in the day, but after so many years, I've really stopped caring. Super Lucky Tale looks like the gameplay is straight ripped from Mario 3D World, and that's pretty cool, but what made that game for me was the multiplayer, and that's desperately what this game needs. When the Cuphead trailer gave a release date, I was surprised, because I legit thought it was out for years. Crackdown 3! I don't care. Terry Crews! Now I care. Here are a bunch of games that are better on PC. Oh god, yes. Life is Strange is a game that I played last year and fell in love with it. Like, yeah, the script was a little cringy at times, but the game itself and the story was so engaging that after the first episode, I canceled the plans I made for the night and just marathoned it. And holy shit, it's in August? Hey, this trailer reminds me I should play Shadow of Mordor. Hey, this trailer reminds me I should play Ori in the Blind Forest. I'm always a fan of backwards compatibility being added. Why it isn't an industry standard yet, I will never know. Hey EA, this is the trailer you should have shown at your press conference to make it seem like it wasn't a waste of time. Wait a minute, classes? An online co-op focus? Loot drops? Did EA just fucking make Destiny? Bethesda... land? They're really rolling with this, aren't they? Hey look, a bunch of Bethesda games I should probably play at some point. It took a while for the words VR to be said at E3, but if a company had to say it, I'm glad it's Bethesda. Fallout 4 seems like a natural choice for VR, but Doom? 
Okay. Why are you doing React videos for an E3 trailer? Creation Club's the answer to the failure of paid mods that they tried to introduce a few years ago. I can already see how bad the microtransactions are going to be for this. Please play this thinking this is Hearthstone. Another year of Skyrim at E3! Get high! Seriously, this is a thing Nintendo themselves announced months ago. And everything that they're introducing in the Switch just looks like mods minus the motion controls. And with how finicky the combat already feels, it could really go either way. The entire Dishonored series are games I've played and never enjoyed. Quake Champions looks like a game I would love to watch but not play. Was Evil Within really worth worth giving a sequel. Wolfenstein The New Order is a fun game I should probably actually finish. The biggest thing about it is how it makes fun of the way modern day shooters play, but the problem with it is that it doesn't fully commit to it, so it feels like a weird mishmash of both crazy stupid action and generic parts of modern military shooters. But this looks like it's taking the stupid and going all the way, and that's exactly the direction they needed to go. Ubisoft. Where's Aisha Tyler? Mario Rabbids. Uh, all hail God King Miyamoto. Why does this look so good? I have never thought about a Mario Tactics game up until this very moment, but I am really down with this kind of idea. But why is it a Rabbids game? And why do they have Mega Man's Mega Buster? It's weird that the Assassin's Creed trailer at Xbox's press conference showed more than their own E3 presentation. Oh, hey, a sequel to that game that wasn't enjoyable. This is the second year in a row where they announced Fractured Butthole coming out at the end of the year. Why is Elijah Wood showing me his final for his experimental film class? And why do I want to play it? You want to play the worst part of Assassin's Creed Black Flag as a multiplayer MOBA? Still looks better than Sea of Thieves. Shots fired! Here's the obligatory Just Dance cringe compilation. It's still coming out on the Wii? Toys to Life is a dying part of this industry, and this is the worst time for them to try to get into it. Oh yeah, Steep exists. Honestly, every time Ubisoft shows off a new Far Cry game, I am just not excited for it in the slightest. I honestly just have no idea why. But hey, at least they aren't doing a cringy fake multiplayer trailer for any of their games this year so far. Huh. This Sing game looks weird. Wait, this has been Beyond Good and Evil this entire time? I've never fully finished Beyond Good and Evil, but the parts I've played of it, I love it. And this is probably the thing that's gonna make me go back and actually finish the entire game. And wow, I'm really excited to see where this will take the franchise. Sony! I don't know what's going on right now, but I really love this performance art. Must have been also really cool to see it actually live. Uncharted The Lost Legacy! Hey, sound guy, pay attention. Am I the only one that never considered Chloe the most interesting character? Like, I love Uncharted and I will always take more, but I would have much preferred a story about Nathan's brother. I also can't tell if they're gonna give us anything to make it stand out from Uncharted 4, or if the the gameplay is just gonna be the very same and we're just getting a new story to go with it. Horizon Zero Dawn, The Frozen Wild. Fix your damn sound! I have never really been excited for Horizon Zero Dawn. Like, aesthetically, it's awesome, but gameplay never appealed to me, but I'm sure that the people who really love the game are probably very excited for this. Days Gone. I was impressed by this game when they showed it last year, and sadly, it's still not impressing me at all this year. Like, it has generic action, generic stealth, and it just seems like it plays like a watered-down version of Uncharted or The Last of Us and does nothing special. Yawn! You know, a full HD console Monster Hunter is something that could easily get me to start playing the series, especially if this has multiplayer. Hey, maybe if we release this a third time, it'll actually sell. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite now has a story mode? I was already sold on it before, but now all I can say is that I'm in love. And seriously, give it a shot, I'm loving it. It feels really weird that there's gonna be an entire generation of 13-year-old kids that think Call of Duty is super innovative for doing a World War II game. Can't afford VR? Then skip this whole part of the presentation. We get it. Skyrim came out six years ago. Please just leave us alone. And I thought Sonic didn't need fishing. Bravo Team seems like the kind of game that I really enjoy in VR, but the problem is that it just looks like a generic modern military shooter. If it weren't for the VR, nothing would really stand out. But if it feels good to play, yeah, I'm gonna enjoy it. But it doesn't seem like the kind of game that's gonna be life-changing or anything. God of War. Kratos as a character is so much fun, but he never really gets any development because his games are all so cartoony that he never really has a chance to explore his character. So I'm really excited to see him in a more story-focused game. And Dan, the gameplay keeps the brutality of God of War while still mixing it up. Consider me sold on this. If there's one way to make me not care about a game, it's David Cage. Looking at how Destiny evolved, it's really obvious that Bungie has learned their mistakes from the launch of the last game. So even though I waited a year on the first one, I'm getting this one on launch day. So if you want to play with me, just get it on PS4 because chances are I'm gonna need a big squad. This also blows Anthem out of the water. I too am really excited for Spider-Man Arkham Asylum. Wait, that was it? Where was The Last of Us 2? Please forget Xenoblade Chronicles X ever existed. Please. Another Kirby! That's all you're getting. We're making a new Pokemon game for the Switch. That's all you're getting. Metroid Prime 4! That's all you're getting. Don't pull that Kingdom Hearts shit on us! After Hyrule Warriors, I'm always down for more Nintendo franchises getting the Dynasty Warriors treatment. Hey look, my Marth from Sonic Redemption made it in here. I am Marth, the Prince of Altea. I am Marth Lau, the Prince of Altea. Breath of the Wild is great, I love it, but even after this trailer, I have no idea what's supposed to be in these DLC packs. But cool amiibo, Rocket League is now on Switch. Give us money. Oh hey look, another Monster Hunter game on Nintendo Switch. What? 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 Oh my god, what? What am I- what is this? What am I feeling?
This music, this gameplay, oh my, oh my god, what, oh my god, I, I haven't felt this happy since I was a stupid little kid, oh my god! Our official press conference may be over, but we still have the Nintendo Treehouse, and guess what, we're still announcing more games. Metroid, Samus Returns, Samus Returns. You know, this is probably why they shut down AM2R. Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga is one of my favorite RPGs because it's just funny, simple, interesting, and fun. The series has just sort of devolved since then, never being able to capture the same magic, but an updated remake is exactly the thing I want from them. And there's even a brand new side story with brand new gameplay to it? Consider me sold on this. Oh my god! Shadow? Metal Sonic? Chaos? All of my favorite villains coming back and teaming up? the fuck are you doing here? Well, that was what I thought of E3. What did you think of it? What got you excited? What seems stupid? Let me know down below. Alright guys, I'll see you next time.